And now we have Dr. Sebastian Gorka joining us on the line, author of Defeating Jihad, this New York Times bestseller. You know him. I'm sure you love him. And Dr. Gorka, thank you for joining us here this morning. My pleasure, Raheem. Thanks for having me. Hey, uh, we've got a, we've got a, I'm going to say, I'm going to use this phrase that I always hear Alex using, but I'm not sure I know really what it means. Uh, we're going to go around the horn here. Um, and we, we say, I take that to mean that we've got a lot of things to cover. I don't know. It, I, I think it's a baseballing term. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it means, but I think, I hope I've used it correctly there. I want to start off with Antifa um, with you, Dr. Gorka. Some 350,000 people have now signed a petition on the White House Petitions website uh, asking for a formal recognition of Antifa as a terrorist organization. Um, that is uh, a term that comes very loaded, uh, but it seems to fit with Antifa's uh, methods. Do you, do you agree with that? Do you take a position on this? Well, listen, hold on to your chair, Raheem. I, I'm uh -oh. going to quote Politico now, okay? Okay. Um, when Politico uh, discusses a DHS FBI finding or, or a paper from 2016 that calls Antifa an organization that should be treated as a terrorist group, then, then we know that there's, uh, there's some substance to this uh, way of looking at it. Um, the fact is, it is an organization that espouses the use of violence for political purposes. That's terrorism. When you say it's okay to use violence against unarmed civilians, for your own political purposes, that is the textbook definition of terrorism. We know they come to their gatherings armed to the teeth. We look at what has happened in the last year, year and a half, and it is the normalization of violence on the left. Let's, let's not get lost in, in, in the, the historic details. The KKK, white supremacists, neo-Nazis, they've been around for a long, long time. They are anathema to a democracy. They are to be expunged from normal uh, discourse, um, but they're not a serious threat. They're small numbers. I mean, the, the, apparently there's maybe 6,000 members uh, of those organizations in a country of 330 million. But now we have the left involved in what? Five police officers killed in one day last year. We have an individual uh, who came to kill multiple, to assassinate multiple Republican congressmen at a baseball field not very far from your studios. We had, uh, and that was by a Bernie supporter. Then we have a Jill Stein supporter, knife to death, two people on a train in Oregon. If there is a rising tendency to political violence here in America, it is on the left, and we have to deal with it as quickly as possible. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate here a little bit with you. Um, Go. First, first question: uh, Is it a group? Is Antifa a group? This is the this is the pushback we often hear from the left: is that you can't prescribe this as a terrorist organization because there is no group, there is no leadership, there is no uh, committee at the top of it. Uh, this Antifa, they say, is a belief system. Yeah, but when when they issue manuals on how to use violence. Uh, before they go to an event, then who's writing those manuals? Are they just springing fully formed out of somebody's forehead magically? This mm. isn't Greek mythology. Somebody, somebody is organizing them. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I hate conspiracy theories because they are theories, but when they are organized, when they all wear the same uniform, where they, they all mask themselves and use the same tactics and follow a playbook, that doesn't happen organically. That is a, a function of pre-planning. So mm. wh wherever the organizational hub is, the center of gravity, whether it's regional, whether it's whether it comes from one central uh, prov provider of tactical advice, this is an organization because just look at the way it behaves. Uh, I, I I understand. Um, when you say, here's the thing. I wrote this article the other day, and it, Dr. Gorka, I wonder if you agree with it. It was it was called with 35 terror attacks in Europe this year. It's time America's left got some perspective. Um, basically saying that you know this this is covering up your statues with burkas is is perhaps a. a a fanciful thing to be doing when when your you know continent just a couple of thousand miles away is suffering from some serious um, 
serious problems as a result of mass migration. Um, but but it extends beyond that. Uh, it, it extends to the point where uh, you have now so many other things going on in the United States that require urgent attention. And meanwhile, you have groups like Antifa and their fellow travelers, uh, not just on the left, but actually in the in what was once upon a time the center ground or even the center right ground. We see some Republicans speaking out in their favor or defending them um, in recent weeks. Um, what will it take, do you think, for these people to reassess for the media whenever any of these things happens? Like you said, uh, attacks on police, attacks on congressmen, um, you know, uh, all from the left. But you didn't have four, five, six days, let alone the weeks of agonizing we've had about this in the establishment media back then. Uh, I actually am quite perturbed at how short-lived the coverage of the shooting of, of, of Steve Scalise was, quite frankly, given uh, right. what, what a significant issue it was. Um, do you perceive that a ban on Antifa would perhaps turn the tide or, to, or at least turn the tables on, on that on that sort of dismissive mindset? No, I, I'm not in favor of, of, of a ban. We, we have to do what we did before. We have to penetrate these organizations. We have to find the ringleaders. And when mm. people advocate for specific use of violence, that is a crime. Mm. And those people should be prosecuted. But, but your broader point is well taken. Look, you have just written the book on no-go zones, on, on you know, the, the threat to our Western Judeo-Christian uh, Judeo civilization from those who wish to destroy it. But, you know, being strategic is prioritizing threats. The, hmm. the largest threat we face is from those who have a religious totalitarian narrative to undermine us from the inside and use force. But we cannot ignore those who, who also... Uh, deny. I mean, these are kissing cousins. They're linked. If if you are um, anti-Western civilization, uh, I don't care whether you're pro-Sharia law or you're pro-anarchy. Both yes. of those things are bad for the democratic Republican system we have created. And therefore, you know, it's not it's not a binary option. It's not either or. Either we deal with mm. leftist violence or mm. we take terrorism seriously. All of them have to be dealt with. Uh, now, Dr. Gorker, we, we, we're, uh, we're short on time because we're back-to-back -back guests today. So I wanted to move on to uh, one of the two, one of the following two topics. But I'm going to let you choose: uh, Dhaka or North Korea. Um, look, you, you sound like you spoke to Francis already. I'm sure she's did a sterling job on the talking about North Korea. So. Mm. Let's talk about uh, Dhaka. Yeah, let's talk about Dhaka then. Um, so you have this uh, story that came out last night. Some people wondering whether that was intentionally placed in Politico or, or whether it was one of these ongoing leak uh, issues. But nevertheless, you had this story come out yesterday uh, that hints that the president will be putting a sort of six-month uh, delay on this to allow Congress to reassess it. Now, that seems to me like the constitutional way to go about it. Uh, but a lot of our callers this morning have, have, been, have expressed their disappointment appointment uh, with the, the lack of urgency it seems in that decision do you do you have a take on that um, look let, let's let's wait and see as to whether that's actually factually correct this mm. isn't an issue that that can be just you know um, swept under the carpet but mm. look at what the president won on he won on three key issues uh, fixing the economy uh, crushing ISIS and the wall. And when we mm. say the wall, that means immigration mm -hmm. and illegal immigration and stopping it. So, no, this is this is something that will have to be dealt with uh, head on. It's not going to go away. Uh, and as such, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not worried. I, as, as somebody, you know, who was in the White House mm. a week and a half ago, uh, you know, Stephen Miller, as long as, you know, God bless Stephen Miller, as long as he's <laughs> in the building, uh, this will be dealt with. Do you, um, his, you're obviously getting the um, hysterics already from the press on this. Lies, actually loads of lies coming out about this now already. People calling these people students, <laughs> um, children. Uh, even though children. I love the children. It's always the children. The 42-year-old Dhaka children. <laughs> 
<laughs> that makes that makes that makes me a toddler. Um, and, and and Dr. Gorka, you're also getting um, the misquoting of statistics. We covered a few of those earlier today on the show too. Um, this is the deferred action, right? That's that's the title of this thing. How did yeah. they? How did the left ever perceive that this was going to remain uh, in limbo when, by its very nature, the last administration admitted in the title of the damn thing that they were just kicking the can down the road for some else well yes and, and and let's let's talk about the facts of the matter because you know very few people do want to this isn't legislation mm. this this is just guidance from within the administration this, this can be changed it's not even a law that sunsets it's it's policy guidance and and as such you know you could just let it revert to the way it was uh, but at the end of the day f- forget about the technicalities of this measure the, the, the principle that drives everything behind the Trump administration and the Trump campaign were, were questions of sovereignty. This mm. is what people don't understand. There is a philosophy, and it's to do with sovereignty, and that's why the Trump phenomena is linked to the Brexit phenomena. And the idea that, that being an American citizen is a right is fallacious. You have no right as a foreigner to be mm. an American citizen. And that's what must inform our debate. We're not here to punish people unnecessarily. It's about rule of law. And this isn't even a piece of legislation that has to go to the Capitol Hill. It's something that can be dealt with administratively. And uh, have faith is what I say to the listeners. Have faith. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm here legally, uh, but I'm not a U.S. citizen and I'm not demanding the ability to vote in your elections, uh, to be able to freely open bank accounts and take out mortgages and all the things that are, you know, given to you by your social security status and all that kind of stuff. M- meanwhile, I mean, do you think if nothing, nothing manages to get done, I mean, do you have any words for the Republicans in Congress who this now goes before to say that if nothing does get done, not only does this under- undermine, you know, your national sovereignty, but it also undermines the idea of legal immigration, doesn't it? Why should somebody like me, for instance, if I decide I wanted to move here full time, Dr. Gorka, why should I follow the legal immigration route? Right, absolutely, absolutely. You are encouraging. Look, you can even say this this connects to Antifa. You're normalizing illegal activity. When you start to normalize things that are detrimental to the larger community writ large, Hmm. that way lies political suicide. Not just for the GOP. The GOP needs to, the GOP still doesn't understand what happened on November the 8th. But I'm talking about the future of the nation. Hmm. And and look, uh, one of the Antifa cries, one of the pathetic, childish, you know, uh, rhyming uh, cries they have ends ends in the phrase, no more USA. Wow. Now, what does that tell you? Wow. This is how all these things are linked. No more USA. Mm. That's, 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 that's links back to what Hillary Clinton said during that speech she gave to that group of bankers that mm. we got hold of the text and we got hold of the audio. What did she say? The whole hemisphere should be without borders. Wow. Well, what does that mean about them? What, what does the word America mean if there are no borders? It means nothing. Yeah. It means yeah. it ceases to exist as a concept in any way, shape, or form. Well, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, I want to thank you for joining us here this morning on Breitbart News Daily. Always a pleasure to hear from you and uh, get your get your guidance um, on what uh, what is to come. So we'll look out for this uh, this end. We'll look out for more movement on the Antifa question. I think it's imperative that we get to uh, get to a, a, a serious position when discussing this uh, this I don't know organization, group, collective, you know, artists, collective, whatever you want to call it. Um, anyway, Dr. Gorka, thank you once again. Make sure you. If you haven't got it already, ladies and gentlemen, pick up Dr. Gorka's book, Defeating Jihad. Uh, Truly is fantastic stuff. Thank you, Dr. Gorka. Thanks, Raheem. Keep doing what you do.